Vietnam's recorded history stretches back to the mid to late 3rd century BCE, when Olac and Nanue Nam Viet in Vietnamese were established Nanue conquered Olac in 179 BCE. Prehistoric Vietnam was home to some of the world's earliest civilizations and societies—making them one of the world's first people who practiced agriculture and rice cultivation. The Red River Valley formed a natural geographic and economic unit, bounded to the north and west by mountains and jungles, to the east by the sea and to the south by the Red River Delta. According to myth the first Vietnamese state was founded in 2879 BC, but archaeological studies suggest development towards chiefdoms during the late Bronze Age Dong Sun culture. Vietnam's peculiar geography made it a difficult country to attack, which is why Vietnam under the Hung Kings was for so long an independent and self-contained state. Once Vietnam did succumb to foreign rule, however, it proved unable to escape from it, and for 1,100 years, Vietnam was successively governed by a series of Chinese dynasties, the Han, Eastern Wu, Jin, Lu Song, Southern Qi, Liang, Sui, Tang, and Southern Han, leading to the loss of native cultural heritage, language, and much of national identity. At certain periods during these 1,100 years, Vietnam was independently governed under the Trus, Trung Sisters, Early Lys, Cooks and Duong Dinh Nghi, although their triumphs and reigns were temporary. During the Chinese domination of northern Vietnam, several civilizations flourished in what is today Central and South Vietnam, particularly the Funanese and Cham. The founders and rulers of these governments, however, were not native to Vietnam. From the 10th century onwards, the Vietnamese, emerging in their heartland of the Red River Delta, began to conquer these civilizations. When Go Kien King of Vietnam, 938-944 restored sovereign power in the country, the next millennium was advanced by the accomplishments of successive dynasties, NGOs, Dins, Early Les, Lys, Trans, Hoes, Later Trans, Later Les, Max, Trins, Nguyens, Tay Sons and again Nguyens. At various points during the imperial dynasties, Vietnam was ravaged and divided by civil wars and witnessed interventions by the Songs, Mongol Yuans, Chams, Mings, Siam, Manchus, French. The Ming Empire conquered the Red River Valley for a while before native Vietnamese regained control and the French Empire reduced Vietnam to a French dependency for nearly a century, followed by an occupation by the Japanese Empire. Political upheaval and communist insurrection put an end to the monarchy after World War II, and the country was proclaimed a republic. Topic: <inaudible> Ancient Period 2879-111 BC. Topic: <inaudible> Hong Bang Dynasty. According to a legend first appeared in the 14th century book Lin Nam Chich Ki, the tribal chief Lok Tuk c. BC found the state Zich Kai in 2879 BC, styled himself as Kin Duong Vong, starting the Hong Bang period. However, modern Vietnamese historians estimated statehood was only developed in Red River Delta at the second half of 1st millennium BC. Sung Lam c. 2825 BC, was Kin Duong Vong's successor. The next line of kings, styled themselves Hung Kings, renamed the country Van Lang. The administrative system include offices like Lak Tuong, Lak Hao and Bo Chin. Van Lang is thought to have been a matriarchal society, similar to many other matriarchal societies common in Southeast Asia and in the Pacific Islands at the time. Various archaeological sites in northern Vietnam, such as Dong Son have yielded metal weapons and tools from this age. Most famous of these artifacts are large bronze drums, probably made for ceremonial purposes, with sophisticated engravings on the surface, depicting life scenes with warriors, boats, houses, birds and animals in concentric circles around a radiating sun at the center. After 18 generations of Hung kings, Van Lang fell to an Duong Vong's invasion in 258 BC. Topic. Cultural evolution This period contains some accounts that mix historical facts with legends. The legend of Jiang tells of a youth going to war to save the country, wearing iron armor, riding an armored horse, and wielding an iron staff, showed that metalworking was sophisticated. The legend of the magic crossbow, about a crossbow that can deliver thousands of arrows, showed extensive use of archery in warfare. Fishing and hunting supplemented the main rice crop. Arrowheads and spears were dipped in poison to kill larger animals such as elephants. 
Beetle nuts were widely chewed and the lower classes rarely wore clothing more substantial than a loincloth. Every spring, a fertility festival was held which featured huge parties and sexual abandon. Religion consisted of primitive animistic cults. Since around 2000 BC, stone hand tools and weapons improved extraordinarily in both quantity and variety. Pottery reached a higher level of technique and decoration style. The Vietnamese people were mainly agriculturists, growing the wet rice oriza, which became the main staple of their diet. During the later stage of the first half of the second millennium BC, the first appearance of bronze tools took place despite these tools still being rare. By about 1000 BC, bronze replaced stone for about 40% of edged tools and weapons, rising to about 60%. Here, there were not only bronze weapons, axes, and personal ornaments, but also sickles and other agriculture tools. Toward the closure of the Bronze Age, bronze accounts for more than 90% of tools and weapons, and there are exceptionally extravagant graves, the burial places of powerful chieftains, containing some hundreds of ritual and personal bronze artifacts such as musical instruments, bucket-shaped ladles, and ornament daggers. After 1000 BC, the ancient Vietnamese people became skilled agriculturalists as they grew rice and kept buffaloes and pigs. They were also skilled fishermen and bold sailors, whose long dugout canoes traversed the Eastern Sea. Modern Central and Southern Vietnam were not originally part of the Vietnamese state. The peoples of those areas developed a distinct culture from the ancient Vietnamese in the Red River Delta region. For instance, the first millennium BC Sa Win culture in the areas of present-day central Vietnam revealed a considerable use of iron and decorative items made from glass, semi-precious and precious stones such as agate, carnelian, rock crystal, amethyst, and nephrite. The culture also showed evidence of an extensive trade network. The Sa Win people were most likely the predecessors of the Cham people, an Austronesian-speaking people and the founders of the Kingdom of Champa. Topic. Thuc dynasty 257-179 BC By the 3rd century BC, another Viet group, the O Viet, emigrated from present-day southern China to the Red River Delta and mixed with the indigenous Van Lang population. In 257 BC, a new kingdom, O Lac, emerged as the union of the O Viet and the Lac Viet, with Thuc Phan proclaiming himself, and Duong Vong, King and Duong. Some modern Vietnamese believe that Thuc Phan came upon the O Viet territory modern-day northernmost Vietnam, western Guangdong, and southern Guangxi province, with its capital in what is today Sao Bang province. After assembling an army, he defeated and overthrew the 18th dynasty of Hung kings, around 258 BC. He proclaimed himself in Duong Vong, King and Duong. He then renamed his newly acquired state from Van Lang to O Lac and established the new capital at Phong Ki in the present-day Phu Tho town in northern Vietnam, where he tried to build the Ko Loa Citadel Ko Loa Tan, the spiral fortress approximately 10 miles north of that new capital. However, records showed that espionage resulted in the downfall of Nduong Vong. At his capital, Ko Loa, he built many concentric walls around the city for defensive purposes. These walls, together with skilled Olak archers, kept the capital safe from invaders. Topic: True Dynasty 207 to 111 BC. In 207 BC, Qin warlord True Da Pinyin Zhao Tuo established his own independent kingdom in present-day Guangdong, Guangxi area. He proclaimed his new kingdom as Nam Viet Pinyin, Nanyue, starting the True Dynasty. True Da later appointed himself a commandant of central Guangdong, closing the borders and conquering neighboring districts and titled himself, King of Nam Viet. In 179 BC, he defeated King and Duong Vong and annexed O Lac. This period is controversial as on one side, some Vietnamese historians consider True's rule as the starting point of the Chinese domination, since True Da was a former Qin general, whereas others consider it still an era of Vietnamese independence as the True family in Nam Viet were assimilated to local culture. They ruled independently of what then constituted the Han Empire. At one point, True Da even declared himself emperor, equal to the Han Emperor in the north. Topic: <inaudible> Chinese dominating period, 111 BC to 938 AD. Topic: 
First Chinese domination 111 BC to 40 AD. In 111 BC, Han troops invaded Nam Viet and established new territories, dividing Vietnam into Gao Kai, Pinyin, Zhao Ji, now the Red River Delta, Ku Chan from modern-day Tan Hoa to Ha Tin, and Yat Nam, Pinyin, Rinan, from modern-day Quang Binh to Hue. While governors and top officials were Chinese, the original Vietnamese nobles Lac Hau, Lac Tuong from the Hong Bang period still managed in some of the highlands. Topic. Trung Sisters 40 to 43. In 40 AD, the Trung Sisters led a successful revolt against Han governor Su Deng Vietnamese, to Dinh, and recaptured 65 states including modern Guangxi. Trung Trac became the queen Trung Nu Vong. In 43 AD, Emperor Guangwu of Han sent his famous general Ma Yuan Vietnamese, Ma Vien, with a large army to quell the revolt. After a long, difficult campaign, Ma Yuan suppressed the uprising and the Trung sisters committed suicide to avoid capture. To this day, the Trung sisters are revered in Vietnam as the national symbol of Vietnamese women. Topic: <laughs> Second Chinese Domination 43 to 544. Learning a lesson from the Trung Revolt, the Han and other successful Chinese dynasties took measures to eliminate the power of the Vietnamese nobles. The Vietnamese elites were educated in Chinese culture and politics. A Gao Cai prefect, Xi Xie, ruled Vietnam as an autonomous warlord for 40 years and was posthumously deified by later Vietnamese emperors. Nearly 200 years passed before the Vietnamese attempted another revolt. In 225 another woman, Tru Thi Trinh, popularly known as Lady Tru, ba Tru led another revolt which lasted until 248. Once again, the uprising failed and Tru Thi Trinh threw herself into a river. At the same time, in present-day central Vietnam, there was a successful revolt of Cham nations in 192. Chinese dynasties called it Lin Yi Lin village, Vietnamese, Lam Ap. It later became a powerful kingdom, Champa, stretching from Quang Bin to Phan Thiet, Bin Thuan. Topic: Early Li Dynasty, 544 to 602. In the period between the beginning of the Chinese Age of Fragmentation and the end of the Tang Dynasty, several revolts against Chinese rule took place, such as those of Li Ban and his general and heir Tru Quang Phuc, and those of Mai Thuc Lone and Feng Hung. All of them ultimately failed, yet most notable were those led by Li Ban and Tru Quang Phuc, whose early Li dynasty ruled for almost half a century, from 544 to 602, before Sui China reconquered their kingdom Van Zan. Topic. Third Chinese domination 602 During the Tang Dynasty, Vietnam was called Annam until 866. With its capital around modern Bac Ninh, Annam became a flourishing trading outpost, receiving goods from the southern seas. The Book of the Later Han recorded that in 166 the first envoy from the Roman Empire to China arrived by this route, and merchants were soon to follow. The 3rd century tales of Wei Wailu mentioned a water route, the Red River, from Annam into what is now southern Yunnan. From there, goods were taken over land to the rest of China via the regions of modern Kunming and Chengdu. In 866, Annam was renamed Tin Hai Quan. Early in the 10th century, as China became politically fragmented, successive lords from the Kuk clan, followed by Duong Dinh Nghi, ruled Tin Hai Quan autonomously under the Tang title of Jiadushi Vietnamese, Tiet Du Su, virtuous lord, but stopped short of proclaiming themselves kings. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Autonomous Era 905 to 938. In 938, Southern Han sent troops to conquer autonomous Gao Chao. Go Qian, Duong Dinh Nghi's son-in-law, defeated the Southern Han fleet at the Battle of Bok Dang 938. He then proclaimed himself King Go and effectively began the Age of Independence for Vietnam. Topic: <laughs> Monarchical Period 938-1858.
The basic nature of Vietnamese society changed little during the nearly 1,000 years between independence from China in the 10th century and the French conquest in the 19th century. The king was the ultimate source of political authority, the final dispenser of justice, law, and supreme commander-in-chief of the armed forces, as well as overseer of religious rituals. Administration was carried out by mandarins who were trained exactly like their Chinese counterparts i.e. by rigorous study of Confucian texts. Overall, Vietnam remained very efficiently and stably governed except in times of war and dynastic breakdown, and its administrative system was probably far more advanced than that of any other Southeast Asian states and was more highly centralized and stable governed among Asian states. No serious challenge to the king's authority ever arose, as titles of nobility were bestowed purely as honors and were not hereditary. Periodic land reforms broke up large estates and ensured that powerful landowners could not emerge. No religious, priestly class ever arose outside of the mandarins either. This stagnant absolutism ensured a stable, well-ordered society, but also resistance to social, cultural, or technological innovations. Reformers looked only to the past for inspiration. Literacy remained the provenance of the upper classes. Initially, Chinese was used for writing purposes, but by the 13th century, a set of derivative characters known as Chu Nam emerged that allowed native Vietnamese words to be written. However, it remained limited to poetry, literature, and practical texts like medicine while all state and official documents were written in classical Chinese. Aside from some mining and fishing, agriculture was the primary activity of most Vietnamese, and economic development and trade were not promoted or encouraged by the state. Topic Independent Era 938-1407 Topic Go, Din, and Early La Dynasties 938-1009 Go Qian's untimely death after a short reign resulted in a power struggle for the throne, resulting in the country's first major civil war, the upheaval of Twelfth Warlords Lone Thap Ni Su Quan. The war lasted from 944 to 968 until the clan led by Din Bo Lin defeated the other warlords, unifying the country. Din Bo Lin founded the Din dynasty and proclaimed himself Din Tian Hoang Din the Majestic Emperor and renamed the country from Tin Hai Quan to Dai Ko Viet literally Great Viet Land, with its capital in Hua Lu modern-day Ninh Binh province. The new emperor introduced strict penal codes to prevent chaos from happening again. He then tried to form alliances by granting the title of queen to five women from the five most influential families. In 979, Emperor Din Tian Hoang and his crown prince Din Lin were assassinated, leaving his lone surviving son, the six-year-old Din Ton, to assume the throne. Taking advantage of the situation, Song China invaded Annam. Facing such a grave threat to national independence, the commander of the armed forces, Thap Dao Tuong Quan, Le Hon took the throne, founding the early La dynasty. A capable military tactician, Le Hon realized the risks of engaging the mighty Song troops head-on, thus he tricked the invading army into Kai Lang Pass, then ambushed and killed their commander, quickly ending the threat to his young nation in 981. The Song dynasty withdrew their troops and Le Hon was referred to in his realm as Emperor Dai Han, Dai Han Hoang De. Emperor Le Dai Han was also the first Vietnamese monarch who began the southward expansion process against the Kingdom of Champa. Emperor Le Dai Han's death in 1005 resulted in infighting for the throne amongst his sons. The eventual winner, Le Long Din, became the most notorious tyrant in Vietnamese history. He devised sadistic punishments of prisoners for his own entertainment and indulged in deviant sexual activities. Toward the end of his short life, he died at the age of 24. Le Long Din had become so ill that he had to lie down when meeting with his officials in court. Topic Li, Tran, and Ho dynasties 1009 When the King Le Long Din died in 1009, a palace guard commander named Li Kong Yuan was nominated by the court to take over the throne, and founded the Li dynasty. This event is regarded as the beginning of another golden era in Vietnamese history, with the following dynasties inheriting the Li dynasty's prosperity and doing much to maintain and expand it. The way Li Kong Yuan ascended to the throne was rather uncommon in Vietnamese history. As a high-ranking military commander residing in the capital, he had all opportunities to seize power during the tumultuous years after Emperor Le Hon's death, yet preferring not to do so out of his sense of duty. He was in a way being elected by the court after some debate before a consensus was reached. The Li dynasty is credited for laying down a concrete foundation for the nation of Vietnam. 
Leaving Hua Lu, a natural fortification surrounded by mountains and rivers, Li Kong Yuan moved his court to the new capital in present-day Hanoi and called it Thang Long ascending dragon. Li Kong Yuan thus departed from the militarily defensive mentality of his predecessors and envisioned a strong economy as the key to national survival. The third emperor of the dynasty, Li Tan Tong renamed the country Dai Viet, Da Yu Great Viet. Successive Li emperors continued to accomplish far-reaching feats, building a dike system to protect rice farms, founding the Kwok Tu Giam, the first noble university, holding regular examinations to select capable commoners for government positions once every three years, organizing a new system of taxation, establishing humane treatment of prisoners. Women were holding important roles in Li society as the court ladies were in charge of tax collection. The Li dynasty also promoted Buddhism, yet maintained a pluralistic attitude toward the three main philosophical systems of the time Buddhism, Confucianism, and Taoism. The Li dynasty had two major wars with Song China, and a few invasive campaigns against neighboring Champa in the south. The most notable battle took place on Chinese territory in 1075. Upon learning that a Song invasion was imminent, the Li army and navy totaling about 100,000 men under the command of Li Thuang Kiet, and Tong Dan used amphibious operations to preemptively destroy three Song military installations at Yangzhou, Qinzhou, and Lianzhou in present-day Guangdong and Guangxi, and killed 100,000 Chinese. The Song dynasty took revenge and invaded Dai Viet in 1076, but the Song troops were held back at the Battle of New Wei River commonly known as the Cao River, now in Bac Ninh Province about 40 km from the current capital, Hanoi. Neither side was able to force a victory, so the Li dynasty proposed a truce, which the Song emperor accepted. Champa and the powerful Khmer Empire took advantage of the Li dynasty's distraction with the Song to pillage Dai Viet's southern provinces. Together they invaded Vietnam in 1128 and 1132. Further invasions followed in the subsequent decades. Toward the end of the Li dynasty, a powerful court minister named Tran Tu Du forced the Emperor Li Hu Tong to become a Buddhist monk and Li Chu Hoang, Hu Tong's young daughter, to become queen. Tran Tu Du then arranged the marriage of Chu Hoang to his nephew Tran Gun and eventually had the throne transferred to Tran Gun, thus begun the Tran dynasty. Tran Tu Du viciously purged members of the Li nobility. Some Li princes escaped to Korea, including Li Long Tuong. After the purge, the Tran emperors ruled the country in similar manner to the Li kings. Noted Tran dynasty accomplishments include the creation of a system of population records based at the village level, the compilation of a formal 30 volume history of Dai Viet, Dai Viet Su, Kentucky by Le Van Hu, and the rising in status of the Nam script, a system of writing for Vietnamese language. The Tran dynasty also adopted a unique way to train new emperors. When a crown prince reached the age of 18, his predecessor would abdicate and turn the throne over to him, yet holding the title of retired emperor Tai Thuang Hoang, acting as a mentor to the new emperor. Despite continued Champa Khmer attacks, the Tran managed to arrange several periods of peace with them. During the Tran dynasty, the armies of the Mongol Empire under Monk Khan and Kublai Khan invaded Annam in 1258, 1285, and 1287 88. Annam repelled all attacks of the Yuan Mongols during the reign of Kublai Khan. Three Mongol armies said to have numbered from 300,000 to 500,000 men were defeated. The key to Annam's successes was to avoid the Mongol strength in open field battles and city sieges. The Tran court abandoned the capital and the cities. The Mongols were then countered decisively at their weak points, which were battles in swampy areas such as Chuang Duong, Ham Tu, Van Keep and on rivers such as Van Don and Bok Dang. The Mongols also suffered from tropical diseases and loss of supplies to Tran army's raids. The Yuan Tran War reached its climax when the retreating Yuan fleet was decimated at the Battle of Bok Dang. 1288. The military architect behind Annam's victories was Commander Tran Kwok Tuan, more popularly known as Tran Hung Dao. In order to avoid further disastrous campaigns, the Tran and Champa acknowledged Mongol supremacy. It was also during this period that the Tran emperors waged many wars against the southern kingdom of Champa, continuing the Vietnamese long history of southern expansion known as Nam Tien that had begun shortly after gaining independence in the 10th century. Often, they encountered strong resistance from the Chams. 
Champa was made a tributary state of Vietnam in 1312, but ten years later regained independence and Cham troops led by King Che Bong Na Cham, Po Bin Azur or Che Bongwar killed King Tran Du Tong in battle and even laid siege to Dai Viet's capital Thang Long in 1377 and again in 1383. However, the Tran dynasty was successful in gaining two Champa provinces, located around present-day Hue, through the peaceful means of the political marriage of Princess Huyen Tran to a Cham king. The wars with Champa and the Mongols left Vietnam exhausted and bankrupt. The Tran dynasty was in turn overthrown by one of its own court officials, Ho Kai Li. Ho Kai Li forced the last Tran emperor to abdicate and assumed the throne in 1400. He changed the country name to Dai Ngu and moved the capital to Tay Du, western capital, now Tan Hoa. Thang Long was renamed Dong Du, eastern capital. Although widely blamed for causing national disunity and losing the country later to the Ming Empire, Ho Kai Li's reign actually introduced a lot of progressive, ambitious reforms, including the addition of mathematics to the national examinations, the open critique of Confucian philosophy, the use of paper currency in place of coins, investment in building large warships and cannons, and land reform. He ceded the throne to his son, Ho Han Thuong, in 1401 and assumed the title Tai Thuong Hoang, in similar manner to the Tran kings. Fourth Chinese domination 1407 In 1407, under the pretext of helping to restore the Tran dynasty, Chinese Ming troops invaded Dai Ngu and captured Ho Kai Li and Ho Han Thuong. The Ho dynasty came to an end after only seven years in power. The Ming occupying force annexed Dai Ngu into the Ming Empire after claiming that there was no heir to Tran throne. Vietnam, weakened by dynastic feuds and the wars with Champa, quickly succumbed. The Ming conquest was harsh. Vietnam was annexed directly as a province of China, the old policy of cultural assimilation again imposed forcibly, and the country was ruthlessly exploited. However, by this time, Vietnamese nationalism had reached a point where attempts to cynicize them could only strengthen further resistance. Almost immediately, Tran loyalists started a resistance war. The resistance, under the leadership of Tran Ki at first gained some advances, yet as Tran Ki executed two top commanders out of suspicion, a rift widened within his ranks and resulted in his defeat in 1413. Topic. Restored era 1427 to 1527. Topic. Later La Dynasty, Primitive Period 1427 to 1527. In 1418, a wealthy farmer, La Loi, led the Lam Sun uprising against the Ming from his base of Lam Sun Tan Hoa Province. Overcoming many early setbacks and with strategic advice from Nguyen Trai, Le Loi's movement finally gathered momentum, marched northward, and launched a siege at Dong Quan now Hanoi, the capital of the Ming occupation. The Ming emperor sent a reinforcement force, but Le Loi staged an ambush and killed the Ming commander, Lu Shan, in Kai Lang. Ming troops at Dong Quan surrendered. The Lam Sun Revolution defeated 200,000 Ming soldiers. In 1428, Laloi ascended to the throne and began the Hao La dynasty posterior or later La. Laloi renamed the country back to Dai Viet and moved the capital back to Thang Long. The La dynasty carried out land reforms to revitalize the economy after the war. Unlike the Li and Tran kings, who were more influenced by Buddhism, the La kings leaned toward Confucianism. A comprehensive set of laws, the Hong Duc Code was introduced with some strong Confucian elements, yet also included some progressive rules, such as the rights of women. Art and architecture during the Le dynasty also became more influenced by Chinese styles than during the Li and Tran dynasty. The Le dynasty commissioned the drawing of national maps and had Go Si Lin continue the task of writing Dai Viet's history up to the time of Le Loi. King Le Tan Tong opened hospitals and had officials distribute medicines to areas affected with epidemics. Overpopulation and land shortages stimulated a Vietnamese expansion south. In 1471, Le troops led by King Le Tan Tong invaded Champa and captured its capital Vijaya. This event effectively ended Champa as a powerful kingdom, although some smaller surviving Cham states lasted for a few centuries more. It initiated the dispersal of the Cham people across Southeast Asia. 
With the Kingdom of Champa mostly destroyed and the Cham people exiled or suppressed, Vietnamese colonization of what is now central Vietnam proceeded without substantial resistance. However, despite becoming greatly outnumbered by Vietnamese settlers and the integration of formerly Cham territory into the Vietnamese nation, the majority of Cham people nevertheless remained in Vietnam and they are now considered one of the key minorities in modern Vietnam. Vietnamese armies also raided the Mekong Delta, which the decaying Khmer Empire could no longer defend. The city of Hue, founded in 1600 lies close to where the Champa capital of Indrapura once stood. In 1479, King Le Ton Tong also campaigned against Laos in the Vietnamese Lao War and captured its capital Luang Prabang, in which later the city was totally ransacked and destroyed by the Vietnamese. He made further incursions westwards into the Irrawaddy River region in modern-day Burma before withdrawing. At his withdrawal, Vietnam extended in what would be considered as the first Southeast Asian Empire and perhaps, one of the most powerful nation in Asia. Topic Warlord era 1527 to 1802 Topic Mac and later La Dynasties Restored period 1527 to 1788 The La Dynasty was overthrown by its general named Mac Dang Dung in 1527 He killed the La Emperor and proclaimed himself emperor starting the Mac Dynasty after defeating many revolutions for two years, Mac Dang Dung adopted the Tran Dynasty's practice and ceded the throne to his son Mac Dang Dong and he became Tai Thuong Hoang Meanwhile, Nguyen Kim, a former official in the La Court, revolted against the Mac and helped King Le Trang Tong restore the La Court in the Tan Hoa area. Thus a civil war began between the Northern Court Mac and the Southern Court restored La. Nguyen Kim's side controlled the southern part of Annam from Thanhoa to the south, leaving the north including Dong Kin Hanoi under Mac control. When Nguyen Kim was assassinated in 1545, military power fell into the hands of his son-in-law, Trinh Kiem. In 1558, Nguyen Kim's son, Nguyen Hoang, suspecting that Trinh Kiem might kill him as he had done to his brother to secure power, asked to be governor of the far south provinces around present-day Quang Bin to Binh Din. Hoang pretended to be insane, so Kiem was fooled into thinking that sending Hoang south was a good move as Hoang would be quickly killed in the lawless border regions. However, Hoang governed the south effectively while Trinh Kiem, and then his son Trinh Tung, carried on the war against the Mac. Nguyen Hoang sent money and soldiers north to help the war but gradually he became more and more independent, transforming their realm's economic fortunes by turning it into an international trading post. The civil war between the Le, Trin and Mac dynasties ended in 1592, when the army of Trin Tung conquered Hanoi and executed King Mac Mao Hop. Survivors of the Mac royal family fled to the northern mountains in the province of Sao Bang and continued to rule there until 1677 when Trin Tak conquered this last Mac territory. The Le kings, ever since Nguyen Kim's restoration, only acted as figureheads. After the fall of the Mac dynasty, all real power in the north belonged to the Trin lords. Meanwhile, the Ming court reluctantly decided on a military intervention into the Vietnamese Civil War, but Mac Dang Dung offered ritual submission to the Ming Empire, which was accepted. Topic Trin and Nguyen lords In the year 1600, Nguyen Hoang also declared himself lord officially Vong, popularly Chua, and refused to send more money or soldiers to help the Trin. He also moved his capital to Fuzan, modern-day Hue. Nguyen Hoang died in 1613 after having ruled the South for 55 years. He was succeeded by his sixth son, Nguyen Phuc Nguyen, who likewise refused to acknowledge the power of the Trinh, yet still pledged allegiance to the Le King. Trinh Trang succeeded Trinh Tung, his father, upon his death in 1623. Trang ordered Nguyen Phuc Nguyen to submit to his authority. The order was refused twice. In 1627, Trinh Trang sent 150,000 troops southward in an unsuccessful military campaign. The Trinh were much stronger, with a larger population, economy and army, but they were unable to vanquish the Nguyen, who had built two defensive stone walls and invested in Portuguese artillery. The Trinh Nguyen War lasted from 1627 until 1672. The Trinh army staged at least seven offensives, all of which failed to capture Fu Zan. For a time, starting in 1651, the Nguyen themselves went on the offensive and attacked parts of Trinh territory. However, the Trinh, under a new leader, Trinh Tak, forced the Nguyen back by 1655. After one last offensive in 1672, Trinh Tak agreed to a truce with the Nguyen Lord Nguyen Phuc Tan. The country was effectively divided in two. 
Topic Advent of Europeans and southward expansion The West's exposure to Annam and Annamese exposure to Westerners dated back to 166 AD with the arrival of merchants from the Roman Empire, to 1292 with the visit of Marco Polo, and the early 16th century with the arrival of Portuguese in 1516 and other European traders and missionaries. Alexander de Rhodes, a French Jesuit priest, improved on earlier work by Portuguese missionaries and developed the Vietnamese Romanized alphabet Quoc Nu in Dictionarium Animiticum Lusitanum et Latinum in 1651. Various European efforts to establish trading posts in Vietnam failed, but missionaries were allowed to operate for some time until the Mandarins began concluding that Christianity which had succeeded in converting up to a tenth of the population by 1700 was a threat to the Confucian social order since it condemned ancestor worship as idolatry. Vietnamese attitudes to Europeans and Christianity hardened as they began to increasingly see it as a way of undermining society. Between 1627 and 1775, two powerful families had partitioned the country, the Nguyen lords ruled the south and the Trinh lords ruled the north. The Trinh Nguyen War gave European traders the opportunities to support each side with weapons and technology, the Portuguese assisted the Nguyen in the south while the Dutch helped the Trinh in the north. The Trinh and the Nguyen maintained a relative peace for the next hundred years, during which both sides made significant accomplishments. The Trinh created centralized government offices in charge of state budget and producing currency, unified the weight units into a decimal system, established printing shops to reduce the need to import printed materials from China, opened a military academy, and compiled history books. Meanwhile, the Nguyen lords continued the southward expansion by the conquest of the remaining Cham land. Viet settlers also arrived in the sparsely populated area known as Water Chenla which was the lower Mekong Delta portion of the former Khmer Empire. Between the mid-17th century to mid-18th century, as the former Khmer Empire was weakened by internal strife and Siamese invasions, the Nguyen lords used various means, political marriage, diplomatic pressure, political and military favors, to gain the area around present-day Saigon and the Mekong Delta. The Nguyen army at times also clashed with the Siamese army to establish influence over the former Khmer Empire. Topic: Tay Son Dynasty (1778–1802). In 1771, the Tay Son Revolution broke out in Khai Non, which was under the control of the Nguyen Lord. The leaders of this revolution were three brothers named Nguyen Nok, Nguyen Lu, and Nguyen Hu, not related to the Nguyen Lords. By 1776, the Tay Son had occupied all of the Nguyen Lord's land and killed almost the entire royal family. The surviving prince Nguyen Phuc An, often called Nguyen An fled to Siam, and obtained military support from the Siamese king. Nguyen An came back with 50,000 Siamese troops to regain power, but was defeated at the Battle of Rach Gam Zoai Mut and almost killed. Nguyen An fled Vietnam, but he did not give up. The Tay Son army commanded by Nguyen Hu marched north in 1786 to fight the Trinh Lord, Trinh Cai. The Trinh army failed and Trinh Cai committed suicide. The Tay Son army captured the capital in less than two months. The last Le Emperor, Le Chu Thong, fled to Qing China and petitioned the Qianlong Emperor for help. The Qianlong Emperor supplied Le Chu Thong with a massive army of around 200,000 troops to regain his throne from the usurper. Nguyen Hu proclaimed himself Emperor Quang Trung and defeated the Qing troops with 100,000 men in a surprise seven-day campaign during the Lunar New Year Tet. There was even a rumor saying that Quang Trung had also planned to conquer China, although it was unclear. During his reign, Quang Trung envisioned many reforms but died by unknown reason on the way March South in 1792, at the age of 40. During the reign of Emperor Quang Trung, Dai Viet was in fact divided into three political entities. The Tay Son leader, Nguyen Nok, ruled the center of the country from his capital Qi Non. Emperor Quang Trung ruled the north from the capital Phu Zan Hu. In the south, Nguyen An, assisted by many talented recruits from the south, captured Jia Din present-day Saigon in 1788 and established a strong base for his force. After Quang Trung's death, the Tay Son dynasty became unstable as the remaining brothers fought against each other and against the people who were loyal to Nguyen Hu's infant son. Nguyen An sailed north in 1799, capturing Tay Son's stronghold Qi Non. In 1801, his force took Phu Zan, the Tay Son capital. 
Nguyen An finally won the war in 1802, when he sieged Thang Long Hanoi and executed Nguyen Hu's son, Nguyen Quang Tone, along with many Tay Sun generals and officials. Nguyen An ascended the throne and called himself Emperor Za Long. Jia is for Jia Din, the old name of Saigon, Long is for Thang Long, the old name of Hanoi. Hence Za Long implied the unification of the country. The Nguyen dynasty lasted until Bao Dai's abdication in 1945. As China for centuries had referred to Dai Viet as Annam, Za Long asked the Manchu Qing Emperor to rename the country, from Annam to Nam Viet. To prevent any confusion of Jia Long's kingdom with Tru Da's ancient kingdom, the Manchu Emperor reversed the order of the two words to Vietnam. The name Vietnam is thus known to be used since Emperor Za Long's reign. Recently historians have found that this name had existed in older books in which Vietnamese referred to their country as Vietnam. The period of division with its many tragedies and dramatic historical developments inspired many poets and gave rise to some Vietnamese masterpieces in verse, including the epic poem The Tale of Kiu by Nguyen Du, Song of a Soldier's Wife by Dang Tran Khan and Don Ti Diem, and a collection of satirical, erotically charged poems by a female poet, Ho Zan Hong. In 1784, during the conflict between Nguyen An, the surviving heir of the Nguyen lords, and the Tay Son dynasty, a French Roman Catholic prelate, Pignot de Bahen, sailed to France to seek military backing for Nguyen An. At Louis XVI's accord, Pignot brokered the Little Treaty of Versailles which promised French military aid in exchange for Vietnamese concessions. However, because of the French Revolution, Pignot's plan failed to materialize. He went to the French territory of Pondicherry, India, and secured two ships, a regiment of Indian troops, and a handful of volunteers and returned to Vietnam in 1788. One of Pignot's volunteers, Jean-Marie Dayot, reorganized Nguyen An's navy along European lines and defeated the Tay Son at Quinone in 1792. A few years later, Nguyen An's forces captured Saigon, where Pignot died in 1799. Another volunteer, Victor Olivier de Puimanel would later build the Gia Dinh Fort in central Saigon. <laughs> Unified era Nguyen dynasty After Nguyen An established the Nguyen dynasty in 1802, he tolerated Catholicism and employed some Europeans in his court as advisors. His successors were more conservative Confucians and resisted westernization. The next Nguyen emperors, Min Mang, Thu Tri, and Tu Duc brutally suppressed Catholicism and pursued a closed-door policy, perceiving the Westerners as a threat, following events such as the Le Van Khoi revolt when a French missionary, Fr. Joseph Marchand, encouraged local Catholics to revolt in an attempt to install a Catholic emperor. Catholics, both Vietnamese and foreign-born, were persecuted in retaliation. Trade with the West slowed during this period. There were frequent uprisings against the Nguyens, with hundreds of such events being recorded in the annals. These acts were soon being used as excuses for France to invade Vietnam. The early Nguyen dynasty had engaged in many of the constructive activities of its predecessors, building roads, digging canals, issuing a legal code, holding examinations, sponsoring care facilities for the sick, compiling maps and history books, and exerting influence over Cambodia and Laos. Under the orders of Napoleon III of France, Rigaud de Genouilly's gunships attacked the port of Da Nang in 1858, causing significant damage, yet failed to gain any foothold, in the process being afflicted by the humidity and tropical diseases. De Genouilly decided to sail south and captured the poorly defended city of Gia Dinh present-day Ho Chi Minh City. From 1859 to 1867, French troops expanded their control over all six provinces on the Mekong Delta and formed a colony known as Cochinchina. A few years later, French troops landed in northern Vietnam which they called Tonkin and captured Hanoi twice in 1873 and 1882. The French managed to keep their grip on Tonkin although, twice, their top commanders Francis Garnier and Henri Riviere, were ambushed and killed fighting pirates of the Black Flag Army hired by the Mandarins. France assumed control over the whole of Vietnam after the Tonkin Campaign 1883-1886. French Indochina was formed in October 1887 from Annam Trung, Kentucky, Central Vietnam, Tonkin Back, Kentucky, Northern Vietnam, Cochinchina Nam, Kentucky, Southern Vietnam, and Cambodia, with Laos added in 1893. 
Within French Indochina, Cochinchina had the status of a colony, Annam was nominally a protectorate where the Nguyen dynasty still ruled, and Tonkin had a French governor with local governments run by Vietnamese officials. <laughs> Modern period 1858-present French colonial era 1858 to 1945 After Gia Dinh fell to French troops, many resistance movements broke out in occupied areas, some led by former court officers, such as Trong Dinh, some by peasants, such as Nguyen Trung Truc, who sank the French gunship L'Espérance using guerrilla tactics. In the north, most movements were led by former court officers and lasted decades, with Phan Dinh Phuong fighting in central Vietnam until 1895. In the northern mountains, former bandit leader Hoang Hoa Tham fought until 1911. Even the teenage Nguyen Emperor Ham Gi left the Imperial Palace of Hue in 1885 with Regent Tun That Thoyot and started the Convong Save the King movement, trying to rally the people to resist the French. He was captured in 1888 and exiled to French Algeria. Guerrillas of the Convong movement murdered around a third of Vietnam's Christian population during the rebellion. Decades later, two more Nguyen kings, Tan Thai and Duy Tan were also exiled to Africa for having anti-French tendencies. The former was deposed on the pretext of insanity and Duy Tan was caught in a conspiracy with the Mandarin Tran Sao Van trying to start an uprising. However, lack of modern weapons and equipment prevented these resistance movements from being able to engage the French in open combat. The various anti-French revolts started by Mandarins were carried out with the primary goal of restoring the old feudal society. However, by 1900 a new generation of Vietnamese were coming of age who had never lived in precolonial Vietnam. These young activists were as eager as their grandparents to see independence restored, but they realized that returning to the feudal order was not feasible and that modern technology and governmental systems were needed. Having been exposed to Western philosophy, they aimed to establish a republic upon independence, departing from the royalist sentiments of the Convong movements. Some of them set up Vietnamese independence societies in Japan, which many viewed as a model society, i.e., an Asian nation that had modernized, but retained its own culture and institutions. There emerged two parallel movements of modernization. The first was the Dong Du Go East movement started in 1905 by Fan Boy Chow. Chow's plan was to send Vietnamese students to Japan to learn modern skills, so that in the future they could lead a successful armed revolt against the French. With Prince Quang De, he started two organizations in Japan, Duy Tan Hoi and Vietnam Cong Hien Hoi. Due to French diplomatic pressure, Japan later deported Chow. Fan Chow Trinh, who favored a peaceful, nonviolent struggle to gain independence, led a second movement, Duy Tan modernization, which stressed education for the masses, modernizing the country, fostering understanding and tolerance between the French and the Vietnamese, and peaceful transitions of power. The early part of the 20th century saw the growing in status of the Romanized Quoc Nu alphabet for the Vietnamese language. Vietnamese patriots realized the potential of Quoc Nu as a useful tool to quickly reduce illiteracy and to educate the masses. The traditional Chinese scripts or the Nam script were seen as too cumbersome and too difficult to learn. The use of prose in literature also became popular with the appearance of many novels, most famous were those from the Tu Luc Van Don literary circle, as the French suppressed both movements, and after witnessing revolutionaries in action in China and Russia, Vietnamese revolutionaries began to turn to more radical paths. Fan Boy Chow created the Vietnam Quang Phuc Hoi in Guangzhou, planning armed resistance against the French. In 1925, French agents captured him in Shanghai and spirited him to Vietnam. Due to his popularity, Chow was spared from execution and placed under house arrest until his death in 1940. In 1927, the Vietnam Quoc Dan Dang Vietnamese Nationalist Party, modeled after the Kuomintang in China, was founded, and the party launched the armed Yen Bai Mutiny in 1930 in Tonkin which resulted in its chairman, Nguyen Thai Hoc and many other leaders captured and executed by the guillotine. Marxism was also introduced into Vietnam with the emergence of three separate communist parties, the Indochinese Communist Party, Annamese Communist Party and the Indochinese Communist Union, joined later by a Trotskyist movement led by Ta Tu Thao. In 1930, the Communist International Comintern sent Nguyen I Quoc to Hong Kong to coordinate the unification of the parties into the Vietnamese Communist Party with Tran Phu as the first Secretary General. 
Later the party changed its name to the Indochinese Communist Party as the Comintern, under Stalin, did not favor nationalistic sentiments. Being a leftist revolutionary living in France since 1911, Nguyen I Quoc participated in founding the French Communist Party and in 1924 traveled to the Soviet Union to join the Comintern. Through the late 1920s, he acted as a Comintern agent to help build communist movements in Southeast Asia. During the 1930s, the CPV was nearly wiped out under French suppression with the execution of top leaders such as Fu, La Hong Fong, and Nguyen Van Ku. During World War II, Japan invaded Indochina in 1940, keeping the Vichy French colonial administration in place as a puppet. In 1941 Nguyen I Quoc, now known as Ho Chi Minh, arrived in northern Vietnam to form the Viet Minh Front, and it was supposed to be an umbrella group for all parties fighting for Vietnam's independence, but was dominated by the Communist Party. The Viet Minh had a modest armed force and during the war worked with the American Office of Strategic Services to collect intelligence on the Japanese. A famine broke out in 1944-45. Japan's defeat by World War II allies created a power vacuum for Vietnamese nationalists of all parties to seize power in August 1945, forcing Emperor Bao Dai to abdicate and ending the Nguyen dynasty. Their initial success in staging uprisings and in seizing control of most of the country by September 1945 was partially undone, however, by the return of the French a few months later. Topic. Relations with China According to a 2018 study in the Journal of Conflict Resolution covering Vietnam-China relations from 1365 to 1841, the relations could be characterized as a hierarchic tributary system. The study found that the Vietnamese court explicitly recognized its unequal status in its relations with China through a number of institutions and norms. Vietnamese rulers also displayed very little military attention to their relations with China. Rather, Vietnamese leaders were clearly more concerned with quelling chronic domestic instability and managing relations with kingdoms to their south and west. Topic: Republican Era 1945 present. Topic: Warring Era 1945 to 76. In September 1945, Ho Chi Minh proclaimed the Democratic Republic of Vietnam (DRV) and held the position of chairman Chu Tik. Communist rule was cut short, however, by nationalist Chinese and British occupation forces whose presence tended to support the Communist Party's political opponents. In 1946, Vietnam had its first National Assembly election, won by the Viet Minh in central and northern Vietnam, which drafted the first constitution, but the situation was still precarious. The French tried to regain power by force. Some Cochin Chinese politicians formed a seceding government, the Republic of Cochinchina, Kong Hoa Nam Kentucky, while the non-communist and communist forces were engaging each other in sporadic battle. Stalinists purged Trotskyists. Religious sects and resistance groups formed their own militias. The communists eventually suppressed all non-communist parties but failed to secure a peace deal with France. Full-scale war broke out between the Viet Minh and France in late 1946 and the First Indochina War officially began. Realizing that colonialism was coming to an end worldwide, France decided to bring former Emperor Bao Dai back to power, as a political alternative to Ho Chi Minh. A provisional central government was formed in 1948, reuniting Annam and Tonkin, but the complete reunification of Vietnam was delayed for a year because of the problems posed by Cochinchina's legal status. In July 1949, the state of Vietnam was officially proclaimed, as a semi-independent country within the French Union, with Bao Dai as head of state. France was finally persuaded to relinquish its colonies in Indochina in 1954 when Viet Minh forces defeated the French at Dien Bien Phu. The 1954 Geneva Conference left Vietnam a divided nation, with Ho Chi Minh's communist DRV government ruling the north from Hanoi and Go Dinh Diem's Republic of Vietnam, supported by the United States, ruling the south from Saigon. Between 1953 and 1956, the North Vietnamese government instituted various agrarian reforms, including rent reduction and land reform, which resulted in significant political oppression. 
During the land reform, testimony from North Vietnamese witnesses suggested a ratio of one execution for every 160 village residents, which extrapolated nationwide would indicate nearly 100,000 executions. Because the campaign was concentrated mainly in the Red River Delta area, a lower estimate of 50,000 executions became widely accepted by scholars at the time. However, declassified documents from the Vietnamese and Hungarian archives indicate that the number of executions was much lower than reported at the time, although likely greater than 13,500. In the South, Diem went about crushing political and religious opposition, imprisoning or killing tens of thousands. Along with the split between northern and southern Vietnam in geographical territory came the divergence in their distinctive choices for institutional political structure. Northern Vietnam Viet opted for a centralized bureaucratic regime while the southern is based on a patron-client mechanism heavily relied on personalized rule. During this period, due to this structural difference, the North and South revealed different patterns in their economic activities, the long-term effect of which still persist up to today. Citizens that have previously lived in the bureaucratic state are more likely to have higher household consumption and get more engaged in civic activities. The state itself tends to have the stronger fiscal capacity for taxation inherited from the previous institution. As a result of the Vietnam Second Indochina War (1954–75), Viet Cong and Regular People's Army of Vietnam (PAVN) forces of the DRV unified the country under communist rule. In this conflict, the North and the Viet Cong with logistical support from the Soviet Union, defeated the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, which sought to maintain South Vietnamese independence with the support of the U.S. military, whose troop strength peaked at 540,000 during the Communist-led Tet Offensive in 1968. The North did not abide by the terms of the 1973 Paris Agreement, which officially settled the war by calling for free elections in the South and peaceful reunification. Two years after the withdrawal of the last U.S. forces in 1973, Saigon, the capital of South Vietnam, fell to the Communists, and the South Vietnamese Army surrendered in 1975. In 1976, the government of United Vietnam renamed Saigon as Ho Chi Minh City in honor of Ho, who died in 1969. The war left Vietnam devastated, with the total death toll standing at between 966,000 and 3.8 million, and many thousands more crippled by weapons and substances such as napalm and Agent Orange. The government of Vietnam says that 4 million of its citizens were exposed to Agent Orange, and as many as 3 million have suffered illnesses because of it. These figures include the children of people who were exposed. The Red Cross of Vietnam estimates that up to one million people are disabled or have health problems due to contaminated Agent Orange. The United States government has challenged these figures as being unreliable. Topic: <laughs> Unified Era, 1976 to 1986. In the post-1975 period, it was immediately apparent that the effectiveness of Communist Party CPV policies did not necessarily extend to the party's peacetime nation-building plans. Having unified North and South politically, the CPV still had to integrate them socially and economically. In this task, CPV policy makers were confronted with the South's resistance to communist transformation, as well as traditional animosities arising from cultural and historical differences between North and South. In the aftermath of the war, under Le Duan's administration, there were no mass executions of South Vietnamese who had collaborated with the U.S. or the Saigon government, confounding Western fears. However, up to 300,000 South Vietnamese were sent to re-education camps, where many endured torture, starvation, and disease while being forced to perform hard labor. The new Economic Zones program was implemented by the Vietnamese Communist government after the fall of Saigon. Between 1975 and 1980, more than one million Northerners migrated to the South and Central regions formerly under the Republic of Vietnam. This program, in turn, displaced around 750,000 to over 1 million Southerners from their homes and forcibly relocated them to uninhabited mountainous forested areas. Compounding economic difficulties were new military challenges. In the late 1970s, Cambodia under the Khmer Rouge regime started harassing and raiding Vietnamese villages at the common border. To neutralize the threat, PAVN invaded Cambodia in 1978 and overran its capital of Phnom Penh, driving out the incumbent Khmer Rouge regime. 
In response, as an action to support the pro Beijing Khmer Rouge regime, China increased its pressure on Vietnam and sent troops into northern Vietnam in 1979 to punish Vietnam. Relations between the two countries had been deteriorating for some time. Territorial disagreements along the border and in the South China Sea that had remained dormant during the Vietnam War were revived at the war's end, and a post-war campaign engineered by Hanoi against the ethnic Chinese Hua community elicited a strong protest from Beijing. China was displeased with Vietnam's alliance with the Soviet Union. During its prolonged military occupation of Cambodia in 1979-89, Vietnam's international isolation extended to relations with the United States. The United States, in addition to citing Vietnam's minimal cooperation in accounting for Americans who were missing in action as an obstacle to normal relations, barred normal ties as long as Vietnamese troops occupied Cambodia. Washington also continued to enforce the trade embargo imposed on Hanoi at the conclusion of the war in 1975. The harsh post-war crackdown on remnants of capitalism in the South led to the collapse of the economy during the 1980s. With the economy in shambles, the communist government altered its course and adopted consensus policies that bridged the divergent views of pragmatists and communist traditionalists. Throughout the 1980s, Vietnam received nearly $3 billion a year in economic and military aid from the Soviet Union and conducted most of its trade with the USSR and other Comic-Con countries. In 1986, Nguyen Van Linh, who was elevated to CPV General Secretary the following year, launched a campaign for political and economic renewal His policies were characterized by political and economic experimentation that was similar to simultaneous reform agenda undertaken in the Soviet Union. Reflecting the spirit of political compromise, Vietnam phased out its re-education effort. The communist government stopped promoting agricultural and industrial cooperatives. Farmers were permitted to till private plots alongside state-owned land, and in 1990 the communist government passed a law encouraging the establishment of private businesses. Topic: <inaudible> Renovated Era, 1986 present. After President Bill Clinton visited Vietnam in 2000, it virtually marked the new era of Vietnam. Vietnam has become an increasingly attractive destination of economic development. Throughout that time, Vietnam has played more significant role in the world stage. Its economic reforms successfully changed Vietnam and making Vietnam more relevant in the ASEAN and international stage. Also, due to Vietnam's importance, many powers turned to be favoring Vietnam for their circumstances. However, Vietnam also faces disputes, mostly with Cambodia over the border, and especially, China, over the South China Sea. In 2016, President Barack Obama became the third U.S. head of state to visit Vietnam, helping normalize relations into a higher level, by lifting embargo of lethal weapons, allowing Vietnam to buy lethal weapons and modernize its military. Vietnam is expected to be a newly industrialized country, and also, a regional power in the future. Vietnam is one of next 11 countries. Topic. Changing names. For the most part of its history, the geographical boundary of present-day Vietnam covered three ethnically distinct states, a Vietnamese state, a Cham state, and a part of the Khmer Empire. The Vietnamese nation originated in the Red River Delta in present-day northern Vietnam and expanded over its history to the current boundary. It went through a lot of name changes, with Van Lang being used the longest. Below is a summary of names. Except the Hong Bang and Tay Son dynasties, all Vietnamese dynasties are named after the king's family name, unlike the Chinese dynasties, whose names are dictated by the dynasty founders and often used as the country's name. Nguyen Hue's Tay Son dynasty is rather a name created by historians to avoid confusion with Nguyen An's Nguyen dynasty. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Vietnamese nationalist historiography. The historian Professor Liam Kelly of the University of Hawaii at Manoa on his Lay Min Kai's Sishan history blog wrote on how Vietnamese ultra-nationalists misleadingly reinterpreted outdated theories by Western geography professors in order to further a Vietnamese nationalist agenda by claiming that Vietnamese invented rice cultivation and therefore were responsible for civilization while Chinese were pastoralists. 
The outdated theory has been disproven with rice cultivation found to not originate in Southeast Asia and the Vietnamese interpretations of the original theories were wrong. Vietnamese ultra-nationalists also claim the Yijing. Professor Liam Kelly criticized the theory of Edouard Chavon that southeastern China was the origin of the Vietnamese before they ended up in their current location. Vietnam claims that Phong Chau Phung Jo was the capital of the Hung Kings. Professor Liam Kelly argued that the Tran dynasty constructed Olac as a way of connecting Vietnam with their homeland of Fujian, the bronze drums of Dong Son, which date back to far before the advent of native Vietnamese historical records were never seen by Vietnamese before before the modern era as a symbol of Vietnam. After the Trung sisters' production of bronze drums stopped in Vietnam, Dai Viet Su Kentucky Tone II copied the mythical accounts of the Huyang Guazi Hua Yang Guo Ji. Liam Kelly disproved the notion that the Phong Chau Phung Jo was the capital of the Hung Kings. According to Michael Churchman, contemporary nationalist historians falsely project modern day animosity between Vietnamese and Chinese onto the history of Vietnam under Chinese rule, and falsely portray historical Chinese and Vietnamese forces as either freedom fighters or oppressors in a narrative of resistance when no such ethnic boundary existed. Professor Liam Kelly criticized O. W. Wolters for doing this. Pre-1500s Vietnam had Confucianism as an integral component according to Liam Kelly. Confucianism influenced traditional education in Vietnam, according to Professor Liam Kelly during the Tang Dynasty native spirits were subsumed into Taoism and the Taoist view of these spirits completely replaced the original native tales. Buddhism and Taoist replaced native narratives surrounding Mount Yen Tu and Zishan. People from Song Dynasty China like Zhao Zhang and Xu Zongdao fled to Tran Dynasty ruled Vietnam after the Mongol invasion of the Song. The Tran Dynasty originated from the Fujian region of China as did the Taoist cleric Xu Zongdao who recorded the Mongol invasion and referred to them as Northern Bandits. Wu Bozong Wu Bo Zong B. 1334 d. 1384 was sent as ambassador to Annam and wrote down in the Rongjinji Rongjinji that the Tran dynasty monarch said to him in a reply his Wu's inquiry on Annam's affairs where the Tran ruler said that Annam proudly adhered to Tang dynasty and Han dynasty customs. Yu Wen and Nan Shi and Nan Feng Su Chun Yi Guan Tang Ji Du Li La Han Jun Shane Yu Wang Kai Xin Ju Jin Dao Zhou Shi Lin Yen Yen Er San Yu Dao Li Yi Ban Chun Duck Van and Nam Su and Nam Phong Tuk Thuan. Y Quan Duong Che Du. Le Nok Han Quan Then. Nok Ung Kai Tan Tu. Kim Dao Chuok Tay Lan. Nine Nine Ni Tam Wei. Dao Li Nya Ban Zan. The Ming Dynasty included the monarchs of the Li and Tran dynasties in its list of important people of Annam. Professor Liam Kelly Le Min Kai suggested that the North in Bin Go Dai Sao referred to the Ming collaborationist Hanoi scholars while the South referred to Tan Hua, the base of Le Loi since the text referred to Dai Viet, and did not introduce China before mentioning North, cited John Whitmore and challenged the claim that Go referred to Ming Dynasty China but instead referred to the Chinese settled Red River Delta area of Vietnam. It was English and French foreign languages translations which bautlerized South into Vietnam and North into China even though people today have no true idea of what South and North referred to in the original text. He believes that it was the Ming collaborationist scholars of Hanoi who were referred to as the Go, and that it was not a term used for Chinese as is currently though in Vietnam, and that the Bin Go Dai Sao not directed at China. In the 20th century for propaganda purposes against French colonialism, the development of the new genre of resistance literature spurred a change in how Bin Go Dai Sao was looked at. Kelly suggested that the Bin Go Dai Sao drew on a previous Ming text. North and South in Bin Go Dai Sao might have referred to internal divisions in Vietnam Hanoi versus Tan Hoa rather than China versus Vietnam. The Ho dynasty's rule and Vietnamese who worked with the Ming were attacked in the Bin Go Dai Sao by Le Loi. The Bin Go Dai Sao criticized a people called Go in Vietnam, and it did not refer to the Ming Chinese. 
It say that Song dynasty clothing was worn by the Tran and Ming while it slammed and criticized Mongol Yuan customs followed by the Go. The Dai Vietsu Kentucky Tone II contained a constructed genealogy tracing back the political legitimacy of Vietnam's rulers to the Chinese Emperor Shenong, similar to how the Northern Way traced the legitimacy of the Tuba to the Yellow Emperor. Dai Vietsu Kentucky Tone II traced the ancestry of the Hung kings to Consort O and Lord Lac Long, who had 100 sons from an egg sac. The purpose of tracing back to Shenong was to claim that the length of Vietnam's history rivaled China's. In the 17th century, Vietnamese historians like Go Tc and Jesuits like Martinio Martini studied texts on the Hong Bang dynasty like Dai Viet Su Kentucky Tone II and used mathematics to deduce that the information on them were nonsense given the impossible reign years of the monarchs. However, modern Vietnamese now believe that the information is true. Go TC used critical analysis of historical texts to question the relations between Zhao Tuo's Nanyue Kingdom in Guangdong and the Vietnamese inhabited Red River Delta, concluding that the Red River Delta was a mere vassal to Nanyue and not an integral part of it. In addition to criticizing the existence of the Hong Bang dynasty, modern Vietnamese nationalists seek to stress local Vietnamese influence in history and downplay the role of foreign origin monarchs, like the fact that the family of the Tran dynasty rulers originated in China. Vietnamese historians have sought to construct a fantasy of a continuous succession since the hung kings of local political units in Vietnam. Vietnamese scholars and historians have debated over whether to regard Zhao Tuo as part of the orthodox succession of rulers or as enemy invader. Professor Liam Kelly suggested that before Chinese rule the Red River Delta was not under a unified polity, both Chinese and Vietnamese sovereigns were honored at a temple constructed by the Nguyen dynasty. The Nguyen emperor Minh Mang sinicized ethnic minorities such as Cambodians, claimed the legacy of Confucianism and China's Han dynasty for Vietnam, and used the term Han people Han Ren to refer to the Vietnamese. Minh Mang declared that we must hope that their barbarian habits will be subconsciously dissipated, and that they will daily become more infected by Han Sino -Vietnamese customs. This policies were directed at the Khmer and Hill tribes. The Nguyen Lord Nguyen Phuc Chu had referred to Vietnamese as Han people. In 1712, when differentiating between Vietnamese and Chams, Minh Mang used the name Trung Quoc Zhang Guo to refer to Vietnam. Vietnam also referred to itself as Trung Ha Zhang Sha. Chinese clothing was forced on Vietnamese people by the Nguyen. Modern Vietnamese have retroactively labeled figures like Tran Ik Tak as traitor to Annam, even though the word for traitor did not exist in Vietnamese during his time and Vietnamese histories like Dai Viet Su Kentucky Tone II do not refer to him as a traitor, South Vietnam retained elements of Chinese culture and grammar in their language while North Vietnam actively engaged in a campaign to remove them while North Vietnam maintained a pro-China position, it was the Cultural Revolution which led to North Vietnam encouraging anti-China sentiment, many anti-Vietnam War protesters bought into a narrative that Vietnam's history consisted of Chinese Chinese invasion for 2,000 years and that Vietnam was a united country, before modern times scholars in Vietnam wanted to copy China's civilization which they perceived as more civilized but since the French introduced nationalism Vietnam sought to present itself in a different aspect as a civilizational rival, a Vietnamese forged and manufactured a fake ancient mythical script claimed to have been used in ancient Vietnam. Modern Vietnamese historians inserted word changes and altered the meanings of texts written by ancient Vietnamese historians on how battles between rebels in Vietnam and the Chinese states such as the Chen Dynasty and Southern Han were viewed. The Nguyen Dynasty initiated government-sponsored ceremonies to the Hung Kings. The French may have established the ceremony on the Hung Kings' death and the Hung Kings had an annual event established for them by Ho Chi Minh. Due to psychological embarrassment over their rule by foreign imperialists, ancient historical texts were edited for nationalistic purposes by modern Vietnamese historians. In the Mekong Delta area of Cochinchina, many Vietnamese and Chinese conducted illegal commercial activities. During the rule of the Chinese Kingdom of Eastern Wu over Vietnam, the local people learned Chinese after Chinese people were moved down to live with them. John D. Fan has suggested a new analysis of the linguistic situation in Vietnam under Chinese rule, suggesting that a Middle Chinese dialect was spoken by the people of the Red River Delta during the Tang Dynasty by drawing on Sino Vietnamese vocabulary, which showed evidence that it was derived from an existing language and that this Middle Chinese dialect was later displaced by a Muang language influenced by Chinese. 
Topic see also Economic history of Vietnam History of East Asia History of Asia History of Southeast Asia Politics of Vietnam President of Vietnam Prime Minister of Vietnam Topic References Topic Bibliography Andaya, Barbara Watson, 2006. The Flaming Womb, Repositioning Women in Early Modern Southeast Asia Illustrated ed. University of Hawaii Press. ISBN 0824829557. Retrieved 7 August 2013. Coedes, George, 1966. The Making of Southeast Asia Illustrated, Reprint ed. University of California Press. ISBN 0520050614. Retrieved 7 August 2013. Dardis, John W. 2012. Ming China, 1368-1644, A Concise History of a Resilient Empire. Roman and Littlefield. ISBN 1442204907. Retrieved 7 August 2013. Hall, Kenneth R., ed. 2008. Secondary Cities and Urban Networking in the Indian Ocean Realm, c. 1400-1800. Volume 1 of Comparative Urban Studies. Lexington Books. ISBN 0739128353. Retrieved 7 August 2013. Nguyen Ba Coach 1978. Fung Nguyen. Scholarspace, University of Hawaii. Taylor, K. W. 2013. A History of the Vietnamese Illustrated ed. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0521875862. Retrieved 7 August 2013. Taylor, Keith Weller, 1983. The Birth of Vietnam Illustrated, Reprint ed. University of California Press. ISBN 0520074173. Retrieved 7 August 2013. Sai, Shishan Henry, 1996. The Eunuchs in the Ming Dynasty. Illustrated ed. SUNY Press. ISBN 1438422367. Retrieved 7 August 2013. Contributor, Far Eastern Prehistory Association Asian Perspectives, Volume 28, Issue 1, 1990 University Press of Hawaii. Retrieved 7 August 2013. Topic further reading Fitzgerald, Francis, 1972. Fire in the Lake, The Vietnamese and the Americans in Vietnam. Little, Brown and Company. Forbes, Andrew, and Henley, David, Vietnam Past and Present, The North, History of Hanoi and Tonkin. Chiang Mai. Kanyashenti Books, 2012. ASIN, B006 DCCM 9Q. Hill, John E. 2003. Annotated translation of the chapter on the Western Regions according to the Hu Hanshu, 2nd Draft Edition Hill, John E. 2004. The Peoples of the West from the Wailu Wei Lu by Yu Huan Yu Huan, a 3rd century Chinese account composed between 239 and 265 AD. Draft annotated English translation. Hung, Hoang Dui, 2005. A Common Quest for Vietnam's Future. Viet Long Publishing. Kiernan, Ben, 2017. Vietnam, A History from Earliest Times to the Present. Oxford University Press. ISBN 9780190627381. Nguyen, Nguyen, Kak Vien, 1999. Vietnam, A Long History. Hanoi, The Joy Publishers. Nguyen, The Anne, Philippe Papin, 2008. Parcours d'une historien du Vietnam, Recule des articles de Nguyen The Anne, Paris. Les Indies Savantes. 1026 pp. Articles are in French or in English. The, Anne Nguyen, 2008. Parcours d'une historien du Vietnam, Recule des articles. Indies Savantes. ISBN 978-2-84654-142-8. Stevens, Keith, 1996. A Jersey Adventurer in China, Gun Runner, Customs Officer, and Business Entrepreneur and General in the Chinese Imperial Army, 1842-1919. Journal of the Hong Kong Branch of the Royal Asiatic Society. Volume 32, 1992, published 1996 Van Jiao Tran, Bok Dang Tran, 1998. Dia Kai Van Wa Tan Fa Ho Chi Minh. Na Zat Ban Tan Fa Ho Chi Minh. The Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees. Published in 2000. 
The State of the World's Refugees 2000, 50 Years of Humanitarian Action, Chapter 4, Flight from Indochina PDF to Ong Vu, 2016. State Formation on China's Southern Frontier, Vietnam as a Shadow Empire and Hegemon, Humanetan 37 1. Topic Primary Sources Werner, Jane, et al., eds. Sources of Vietnamese Tradition 2012 excerpt and text search topic in Vietnamese Vietnamese National Bureau for Historical Record 1998 Com Din Viet Su Thong Giam Quang Muk in Vietnamese Hanoi Education Publishing House Go Si Lin 2009 Die Viet Su Kentucky Tone 2 in Vietnamese Noi Kak Quan Ban Ed Hanoi Cultural Publishing House ISBN 9786041690134 Tran Trong Kim 1970 Vietnam Su Luoc in Vietnamese, Saigon, Center for School Materials Pham Van Son 1960, Viet Su Tone 2 in Vietnamese, Saigon Taylor, Keith Weller 1983, The Birth of Vietnam, University of California Press, ISBN 978-0-520-07417-0 Tran Dan Tien. Nung Mao Choyan Ve Doi Hot Dong Kua Ho Chu Tik Van Tien Dung. Dai Thang Mua Zan Han Trin Bien Dong Vols, 1 and 2, Anthology of Memoirs by Vietnamese Boat People Nguyen Cac Nu. Nguyen Gok Dan Tok Vietnam. Num Nien Ku Su Dia Van Phu Hoang Dong. Nine Biu Lich Su Viet Nam Thoi Kentucky 1945-1975. Dai Nam. 2003 Le Duan, De Quang Cash Mang Min Nam Nhat Tien, Duong Phuc, Vu Tan Thuy. Pirates in the Gulf of Siam Nguyen Van Hoi, Tim Hugh Kong Dong Noi Cham Thai Vietnam Topic External links The Vietnam Maritime Archaeology Project Center Fallout of the War from the Dean Peter Krogh Foreign Affairs Digital Archives Vietnam History from Ancient Time Vietnam's Early History and Legends by C.N. La Asian Nation, The Landscape of Asian America Tunking by William Mesny Pre-Colonial Vietnam by Ernest Bolt University of Richmond Human Rights in Vietnam 2006 Human Rights Watch French Indochina Entry in a 1910 Catholic Encyclopedia about Indochina New Advent. Virtual Vietnam Archive Exhaustive Collection of Vietnam-Related Documents Texas Tech University Geneva Accords of 1954 Text of the 1954 Accords by Vincent Ferraro Mount Holyoke College Viet Hoc Tu Quan, Institute of Vietnamese Studies, Vien Viet Hoc Many PDFs of Vietnamese History Books Vietnam Dragons and Legends Vietnamese History and Culture by Dang Tuan Indochina – History links for French involvement in Indochina, Kasahistoria.net Vietnam – History links for U.S. involvement in Indochina, Kasahistoria. Net Early history of Vietnam – Origin of Vietnam name Vietnam full history Hoang Van Kai, Tu Thuc Dan Den Cong San Hoang Van Hon, Jo Nook Trong Bien Ca Hoang Van Kai, Tram Hoa Dua No Tren Dat Bac Nguyen Tan Giang, Tuang Nim Khan Duang Fan Chu Trinh.